Okay, so uh, let's see. I have uh, ordered a Cisco small business, the Tenport SG300. Because I need my access points to connect with a PoE switch. So let's see what's inside. Again. Okay, this time there is a CD. Quick start guide. And let's see, probably power and the switch itself and mounting brackets for an, for an rack. Now, personally, I would have liked that the adapter was included in the switch. So make the switch better and bigger and I think you could fit in the adapter there. Like the normal 24 or 52 uh, switch. But okay, yeah, this, so it's with an adapter. Also, I don't like these. I like to have a normal standard uh, power connector. What is it, C13 or C14? Uh, also a uh, communication cable. The switch itself, you have some plugs to mount it on the wall. Some small feet and inside are the screws also for I think for the uh, mounting bracket. So the switch, the mounting bracket on here on the side. And again here. So that's fine for me. That's no problem. Let's see. It's not heavy, so I don't understand again why you don't put in the adapter anymore inside the switch. Keep it small. Well, okay, there are mounting brackets, so I like a bigger switch with power included. That's my opinion. So, so let's go and boot it up, connect my uh, access points on it, and configure it with for my network environment. And well, I'll show you maybe a little bit of the interface, but it's pretty much the same, I think, for every. SG series. So everything is connected to my network. Um, the switch will get a uh, IP address from the DSCP. If you don't connect with a DSCP or if you don't have one, then you should configure it using um, the default IP address, which is 192.168.1.254. So let's go ahead and log in. Default is Cisco. Cisco. And the first thing you get is you have to change your password. So let's go ahead and do that. Always change it. Then you get a few initial setup here, a quick access here and the device status here. Let's go ahead and go in the first one. So default HTTP and HTTPS is enabled, but if you want to configure it through a telnet or SSH, you can enable it here. If you're a Cisco certified, you probably are faster in configuring it with a telnet session or a SSH session than in the web interface here. So uh, the other one is change your device uh, IP address. So let's go ahead, it's default on VLAN 1. Let's go ahead and change it to a default one. Um, mine is going to be on 62. Uh, you can enable loopback interface, give it a different IP address. And the default gateway you can change here also, but that's fine for me. It doesn't need one, but sometimes handy if you want to go and configure the uh, time server and such. So let's go ahead and click apply here. And it should now be able, let me check first if I can bring to the new one. Ah, oh, there it is. 
it goes automatically to the new IP address. So log in again with the password you set up. Um, then you can do some quick settings like uh, location. Let's say it's because it's in my desk here. Um, my name would be fine to contact. I'm going to set a different host name. And the system mode you can choose layer 2 or layer 3. Let's leave it on layer 2 for now because if you choose layer 3 then it will reboot and uh, yeah, there will be different functions. The, the switch will act as a layer 3. So let's go ahead and save it. Let's see, console settings. Auto detect is fine, you can set it as static. You'd say 9600. With the default is uh, 11. Five two zero zero. At the user accounts here, you can uh, change the password again for uh, the Cisco user or add other users. Uh, time settings here. You can set the system time here. Uh, you can uh, do daylight savings. Um, my time zone is plus one. That's not correct. It's 2016 November 9th at the moment. The clock is not correct. It's now, let's say 25, it's 24, so, but let's do it on 25. Um, then you can you can put in an S, as an SNDP server if you want. You can go ahead and do some logging extra, and of course to a remote server if you want. My name IP. You can do some tests. You can ping. You can do some trace routing. You can do reboot and restore default settings here. The discovery is enabled LLDP and CDP. Most of you will probably need the VLAN management. You can add VLANs here. Configure these interfaces with the PVID. The primary VLAN and the secondary VLAN PVID is, I think, here. Yes. PVID, the membership. There is a voice VLAN, separate voice VLAN. If you configure it, you can go ahead and do a spanning tree. There are some security settings also to implement radius, password length. SSH server, you can put in all security here. ARP tables, my computer is connected to the interface, you can search the ARP table here. So once you configured everything here that you need, maybe quality of servers for voice or video or something you need to be ahead of the traffic, you will have to save the configuration. See it blinking here, click it, running to start up, it's just like in Cisco Catalyst uh, version, apply, OK. And that's it. Now uh, I'm going to switch to the layer 3 and it will reboot and will look at the interface to change the IP address a bit. Let's go ahead and apply. Automatic reboot. Yes, okay. So I want to show you this because once you switch from layer 2 to layer 3, the fixed IP address you set up is gone. So it reverted to a DHCP. Now look mine up. It's uh, this one. So 
I don't know if it will keep the rest of the settings, like passwords and the rest of it. See? It's gone. I did save. So I don't know why it's, it's changed everything. So let's see if he kept my... Um, no, everything is gone here. Even the device IP address, it's gone. Now changing it is a little bit weird. So you can change it here to static. You can choose static, but it will keep this address. I probably can change it through the um, through a telnet session or a SSH session. I'm gonna look it up. So uh, also I can't add a second one. So let's say I wanna do on VLAN 1 also a static IP address here and let's say let's go ahead and do this one and it will come up with duplicate IP interface on the same subnet so it's not possible so I can delete it also because I'll lose my connection with the switch let's say I want to go and, and put it on a port then can we add one? No. So it's a little bit weird. What I can do is probably on VLAN 1 put it on another subnet. Let's see. Yes, that works. So uh, let's go ahead and change our IP address to this range and see if we can remove this one and add one back in the in my original range here. So let's go ahead and do that. So I change it and indeed I can go to that IP address, log in again. And then go ahead and let's remove this one. Delete it. Hopefully I can still keep my connection here. Don't know if it likes, okay. Can I do stuff? Yep. Let's go ahead and put in a static IP address now with the correct one. Click apply close there it is now let's go ahead and go back to my original IP address I want yes it's working let's go ahead and close this one and go back to the IP address and remove this one that's it like I said you probably can do it faster through telnet session to a command line but this is the way, the way you can do it with the configuration website don't forget to always save your work click apply and we'll, the running configuration will be back up to the startup configuration. Done. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and let's leave comments or like the posts.